Well, as they say, necessity sure is a real mother. Um, and I'm needing to do something right now. Uh, I need to tap inch and a quarter fine thread holes. It's something I do quite frequently because I build this pipe squisher set up here. Um, I actually have these things for sale if you're interested. But that's beside the point. So I'm getting real tired of trying to use this in the mill and use a wrench on it. Basically, I'm just tired of doing it by hand. And uh, I just ruined my last little piece because I got the tap crooked somehow. <sighs> yeah, I'm literally an eighth of an inch off on that distance. Can't have that on this. This has to be really, really true on this project. Hold up. I was doing the edit for this video and I really don't like what I said here at the beginning. So I'm making a new intro here. Because what I'm doing is I need to use my inch and a quarter tap quite frequently and I'd like to do it in the milling machine under power instead of doing it by hand with a wrench. Uh, so what I'm going to do is make this little adapter right here that fits over the tap. It has two drive flats up there that engage with where the wrench is supposed to go on the tap. So that will spin it, right? Positive engagement. It's got a flat milled here that goes in one of the grub screws on the inch and a quarter end mill holder. So that fits in there, like so. All right, and then that will drive the tap in the mill. The tap is actually not constrained in this adapter. It's able to free float up and down like that. The nice thing about having it float up and down like that is if I get in trouble, I can just lift the quill and that will stop the engagement and stop the drive, right? So hopefully I won't destroy things. So anyway, I am making this little sleeve right here. And hopefully you can understand what's going on now. I am doing this for a pretty large tap here, but you could scale this thing up and down to whatever size of tap you have, right? Like it doesn't have to be whatever. You get what I'm saying, right? This thing is scalable. Well, I hope that makes a little more sense to you. Back to the video. My half inch end mill is looking pretty used, so I don't think I want to just start digging into that with the big old half inch end mill to make the slot that's going to hold the who's my doodle in place up here. So I'm going to start whittling away with it with my little quarter inch. Unfortunately, I can't reach down all the way. See those flutes don't go that deep. So I'll take off as much as I can with the quarter inch first and then we'll put my crappy half inch in here and see if I can destroy everything because this half inch is too dull. So that's my game plan for right now. Stopped. I'm down six hundred thousandths, so 0.6 of an inch. That's about as far as I can reach with this little lead mill.
I've moved over 200 thousandths each way. So that's 400 thousandths I've taken out. And 250 and 400 is 650. And I'm right there. So spot on, another 100 thousandths to go, which makes sense. This should be the final pass. Yep, oh, that fits perfect. That is nice. Very, very nice. I'm gonna switch to a bigger end mill and make it a little bit deeper. Something I didn't actually think would work out, but works out great, is this top set screw up here is actually in that slot. The set screw here is going to go in and actually hit the flat of the tap right here. So that's going to be awesome. So I just have to mill a flat for this set screw down here, is it? So I'm going to figure out how to set that all up, make sure it's good and square to this, perpendicular to that. Figure out exactly where it's at. Uh, we'll stick that back in the mill and put a little flat right there. All right, I used the end mill to make sure this was straight up and down here. Just put the piece in loose and backed it up to the end mill like that, clamped it down. I'm gonna call that good enough. I just need a flat spot is all I need and I don't wanna get down into the meat of the hole or anything, so call that right. good. So I've got that set screw run in, got the flat on there, and it's in the correct place. And that tightens up. I'm gonna back it off just a skosh. Yep, got slack so it's not binding on either side, you know, top or bottom of the flat. Well, let's see. Go. All right, I got the shaft flipped upside down like this. And we will, and I've got it indicated. I think I am spot on. Definitely within a thousandths on the dial, which uh, I don't know what that translates to in that distance. So very, very little run out. It is close enough for this because after I get done putting a one inch hole through this, we'll stick it in the end mill holder and I'll put a boring bar in the vise here and we'll actually bore that out. So the run out doesn't be perfect. So really, really close. And we will bore down through that. Changed a little bit right there. Is it loose? I don't think that'll come out. Hmm. Maybe I should see if I can get this a little more at the bottom. Like 
that's cut all the way through now. Yep, that's it. Okay. All right, let's get that out of there. Oh yeah, see, there's the plug. Still hot, but yeah, plug's right there. I got two little boring bars in my vise, that way, you know, one on each side so the vise jaws aren't getting pushed sideways. They're identical boring bars. I forgot how deep this is going to be. I don't crash my boring bar all the time. Let's see, it's over there. There, all right, so I set my lock there. A little fast, a little fast. Tilt it out enough. And doesn't quite. Well, at the right spot it will, so just a few thousandths more. Well, this thing turned out nice. I'm really happy with it. Got just a, maybe a skosh, a wiggle on it. Maybe a little oversized. Maybe could have been just a little tighter fit, but... I don't think that's going to hurt nothing. <clears throat> so put that up in there and run in your set screws. And I don't know about running in this top one actually. I might have to uh, redo these flats. I'm kind of thinking about this. Because um, when I tighten this top one, you notice it actually kicks the tap off to the side a little bit there. I got just a little bit of play. Now, erp, see that? I got erp, erp, which makes it run crooked. Uh, may not matter. I might just run it with this bottom scrub screw tight. That way, this thing can float up and down as it makes the threads anyway. I'm, so, we'll see. Well, I just hope it's not too loose. Now that I got that in there, I almost feel like it's a little looser. But it ought to work great. So we'll give it a shot here. Um, there we go. Let's see how terrible this goes, I guess. Ready? Ready. Keep going. Got plenty of room. far as I dare go. Man, that was easy. Woo! That worked awesome. Man, oh man. That was so slick. Those threads look good. Oh, man. That was freaking awesome. That's so much better than trying to use a wrench and horse around that thing for like 15 minutes or whatever it took me last time. That's amazing. I'm so freaking happy with that. 